The people of Zambandoga Valley in West Papua are slashing and burning their land, not to plant crops, but to build an airstrip. They've lived a traditional life, wearing penis goods and celebrating with great pig feasts for as long as anyone can remember. Now, they want an airstrip in their valley, which will change their lives forever. They've seen the planes overhead on their way to the next valley. During the Second World War, Papuans built wooden decoys to bring in the planes. It was known as the cargo cult. Now they know they need an airstrip. They have great enthusiasm for the project, but little knowledge of what this bridge to the outside world will bring. They've lived cut off from this world, isolated by steep hills and tribal warfare. Pastor Herman is the driving force behind the building of the airstrip. Though he's a local, he went to missionary school and wants change, even if it does destroy many of the old customs. <laughs> One custom that no one can change is that everyone here wants to have their say. Pastor Herman has unbounded and live over a large area of steep and difficult terrain, and everyone has something else to do. The children have been promised a hut, and building it will teach them the skills they'll need in life. Although the airstrip will bring new ways, they're learning the old way to build. Malilu has three wives and many children and grandchildren. He's a clan leader of great stature. His home is like a small village with all the relations who live there. Wives had to be paid for here and the price is made up mainly of pigs and cowrie shells. These have been brought here many years ago, over great distances from the coast. Melilu's niece, Alila, is back home. 
She's married and should be at her husband's house. But because they haven't paid the bride price, Melilu has brought her back. Alila's friend Joanna has also come to visit. She's married to the brother of Alila's husband, and since Alila came home, has been left to do all the work alone. Malilu believes in keeping their traditional culture and way of life for his family but he wants the airstrip too. His grandchildren are growing up in a changing world, and by building an airstrip, change will come even faster to their valley. They have little idea just how much change this will bring. At the top of the airstrip, they're waiting for a rare event, the arrival of someone from the outside. They need an expert to show them how to build the strip. John Cutts arrives after a grueling walk. There's a traditional welcome for him. He's the son of missionaries and grew up nearby, so he speaks their language well. He's devoted his life to helping the Highlanders with development. Everyone's pleased to see him again. Enthusiasm is high, and they've started work before they've quite worked out what to do. John cuts his visit has spurred on the work, but it doesn't last for long. Next day, no work is being done. As part of their culture, they must honor John Cutts. Indeed, they should never have started a major project like this without a pig feast. They must cook the pigs before the afternoon rains come. 
the feast will last all day. Five pigs will be killed, as well as a score of rabbits and chickens. A man's wealth is judged by the number of pigs he owns. So to find enough for a big feast is a major undertaking. Before they kill the pigs, they must perform a traditional war dance called a waita. Fortunately, there's no longer much tribal war. Even so, they run round in a circle, holding their spears. They will kill the pigs on the new airstrip in order to drive out the spirits of their ancestors. Most people still believe in spirits, though it's against the teaching of the church. They accept the church and the old beliefs side by side. Although it's against his teachings, a ceremony is performed by the pastor. At last, the slaughter is done, and they're ready to light the fire. The pigs are cooked in a pit with hot rocks. The fire must be lit in the old way. While the rocks are heating, the pigs are singed to burn off the bristles. Pigs are only eaten on very special occasions, and nothing is too much trouble to ensure they are done well. The pit is dug to be filled with layers of meat and vegetables, intermingled with the hot rocks. Pigs are prepared by the leaders of many clans. In the past, they would seldom get together because of the dangers of tribal war. The church has changed this. <laughs> 
The meat is carefully packed between vegetables. This will ensure that it's delicately cooked. Everyone helps, but Ayob's in charge. He's having a great time. While the pigs cook, some of the men play volleyball. This is a new game for them with a ball brought by missionaries from the outside. Amen. Malilu makes use of the time to try it again to get the bride price owed to him for his niece, Alila. Malilu has made little progress when, after an hour or so, the meat is done and they open the pit to take out the pigs. This is a large feast and a moment of great excitement for the men. Dividing the meat fairly is critical. In the past, this is an issue that has led to war. One change has come. Although the meat is divided by clan leaders, it is now distributed by church. The church is fighting to change their way of life. At least it has reduced clan warfare. Yeah. <laughs> 
The more fat the piece of pig, the more of a delicacy it's considered to be. John cuts his guest of honor. Ayup entertains him well. A feast of this size is rare. Maybe the next time they'll have one will be when the first plane lands on the new airstrip. That will be a while. There's lots to be done. Next day, work on the airstrip is held up again. John Cutts bought 24 shovels, which they need to level the ground. The shovels haven't arrived. Men from Zombandoga took money as an advance on some timber. Till this is repaid, the shovels will not be released. Pastor Herman has taken on the task of trying to get the money back. <laughs> The issue is not resolved, but Pastor Herman is passionate that they must get their airstrip.
There's plenty to be done on the airstrip. But were those elders right to cast their magic spell? Will they get their schools and hospital? Or will instead their land be mined and destroyed and their timber taken away? Burning the wood provides excitement for more clearing to be done. It's not long, though, till work stops for a more popular activity. Talking. Despite what they say, their work is beginning to show, and the ground does look just a little more like an airstrip. There's always something getting in the way of work on the strip. This time it's Malilu, who's still trying to get the bride price for his niece. This is a man's argument, but Joanna can't stay away. She desperately wants Alila back. 
There seems to be no resolution in sight. It's especially hard for Joanna, who's lost her friend and has to do all the work by herself. When the boys grow up, will there still be bride prices to pay? Probably. But will they work for a timber company or a mine? When the airstrip is made, maybe a teacher will come. They'll be sitting in school with less time to play. Malilu is back at home. He sees no prospect of getting his bride price, just conflict and possible clan warfare. He sends the women to his fields to get sweet potatoes. He's promised to feed the workers tomorrow down on the airstrip. <laughs> sweet potatoes grow abundantly up here in the highlands. Without them, there'd be almost no one here. Harvesting them is always left to the women to do. Joanna has joined them. She's lonely without Alila and often comes to Malilu's home.
Next morning the hills are deep in cloud and the rains which usually come in the afternoon have been on and off since dawn. There's another reason why there's no one at the airstrip. There's a mourning ceremony for someone who died last month. Pig meat is shared amongst everyone who comes. This is one tradition they don't want to change. <laughs> This ceremony is part of what the pastor is so against. The pastor's words were in vain. Next day there is almost no one. The young boys were not at the morning ceremony, but they also enjoy tradition. They're playing at tribal war, hurling their pretend spears as they whoop and yell, just as their fathers did in battle. 
and battle is never far from their father's minds. Their weapons go with them wherever they go. Within a decade, they've had major war between the clans, and a while before, to leave their valley would have meant a likely death. A few still make the armor they use to protect themselves against spears in the days of the last major battles between clans. Ayup is with his wife and children. He's related to Malilu and wants to help raise the bride price for Alila. This gives him problems at home. Next day, a few stalwarts turn up at the strip. They decide to remove the goat house, which stands in the middle of the runway. The owner is away today, and though he has agreed, it seems more tactful to do it out of his sight. Ayop is here. He failed to get the bride price from Malilu. <laughs>
Pastor Herman is working instead of talking this time. Back at his home, Melilu is worrying about the harsh words that passed in the discussion of his niece's bride price. Joanna is there too, but her friend Alila is not to be seen. The girls are all weaving net bags, but her friend Alila is not to be seen. The girls are all weaving net bags. <laughs> Ogonamagapa, <laughs> At last, a load of shovels arrive. Pastor Herman got half of the money back, so 12 of the 24 have been released. In Zombandoga, any good news is an excuse for a dance, and this is very good news. Now there's no excuse for delay. Enough shovels are here, the morning ceremony is over, and Alila has gone back to her husband. There's nothing to keep the people away from the strip. At last, work seems to be getting earnestly underway. Men and women from all the clans are working together. Ayup, because of the missing shovels, is using a digging stick and Pastor Herman is pulling his weight instead of telling them what not to do. Melilu has let Alila stay with her husband and for now forsaken his bride price.
They're working hard for the future. They want schools and a clinic, but have little idea of what will come to. There'll be those who will want to mine their land and cut down their trees. There'll be a military and government presence undermining their culture. Life was hard in the days of tribal warfare and strife. But now, they'll enter another kind of world, moving firmly to the future, convinced of the virtues of progress. <laughs>